Have you ever had a baby screaming at you for three hours straight and wanted to lose your mind? If so, this is the video for you. In this video, I am going to tell you about how I survive infant colic and what you might be able to do to deal with it a little bit better. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Ginny. I am a certified teacher, doctoral student, and also a mom of two lovely girls. This one right here is Mina. She is my newborn. And then I also have Alice, who's a 17 month old. Something that we have recently discovered that we need to deal with, with this cute lady, which yes, she's wearing a pumpkin. I know it's August, but every day is Halloween. But we have never had to deal with infant colic before. <laughs> And with this little lady, we are dealing with infant colic. If you don't know what colic is, colic is where a baby is crying for three hours or more a day, at least three days a week for no real reason. So what that means is, is you fed them, you've changed them, they have gotten enough sleep and they're still screaming and crying. It can be mentally very taxing and physically very taxing as a parent. So I wanted to give you my top five tips for how we've been dealing with infant colic. And I'll tell you right now, not everyone works every time. So we kind of have to cycle through all of them. Tip number one, there's a couple of different things you can try when your little one is screaming mad. So one thing that we try is a pacifier. Sometimes it will work and we'll placate her enough for her to fall asleep. And sometimes she wants nothing to do with it. So try a pacifier. That's one thing that you can try. Something else that we found some success with is doing what's called leg pumps. We call them leg pumps. Basically when baby's laying down, you push their legs up gently to help release gas because sometimes infant colic can be calm by gas they haven't burped enough for example so we have found some success with leg pumping however as soon as you stop they start crying again unless you know the shoe drops and they actually poop and then sometimes they will feel a little bit better something else that's worth trying is actually walking around with your baby now sometimes the baby will be okay cradled like I'm holding Mina right now sometimes she doesn't like that sometimes I'll put her up on my chest and she prefers that instead so switch up how you're carrying baby and usually for Mina she does not like me sitting down so I will have to walk around and you know bounce her a little bit but right now she's actually being very calm and sweet which probably means she's not gonna sleep tonight <laughs> With this little lady, we have found that's the case. We'll do leg pumps, she will poop or pass gas, and then she'll be hungry immediately and screaming over that. But then once we feed her, she does a little bit better. She actually stops screaming for a little while. However, like I said, that doesn't work every time. Something else that is very helpful to try is white noise. Now we use white noise all the time. With Mina, she actually has a white noise machine um, in her pack and play downstairs when she takes naps. And also, of course, we have the snoo bassinet, which has white noise built into it. And we have the hatch. So we have lots of different white noise, which is very helpful in helping her sleep. The womb is a loud place. It is not quiet. So babies tend to do better. Newborns in that fourth trimester tend to do better when they have white noise. Tip number two when you're dealing with infant colic is what I like to call phone a friend. So sometimes my husband and I will just get fried. We'll be fried. We have had enough of the screaming in our face and we just have to tag out. And that's something that's kind of helped us survive is being able to hand cute little Mina off when she's screaming and kind of recharge for a minute. Now, if you do not have a, a spouse or significant other that you can share the load with, maybe you have a neighbor or a family friend or even just a friend in general that you could have come help you a few hours a day, tends to be, at least for us, that the colic happens the same time every single day, roughly, which is the early evening. You also could literally just 
call a friend if you need a mental break to just complain about how your baby screams all the time. Sometimes having that ear is very helpful to just decompress just a little bit. <laughs> Tip number three and one that we have found a lot of success with is actually using a baby carrier. We tend to use our own respective carriers. My husband uses the Ergo Baby and I use the Happy Baby Carrier and we find that when we wear her she tends to settle. Now she'll fuss for a little bit but she does tend to settle if everything else that I've mentioned is not working out. So if you have some sort of baby carrier I would highly recommend you try out baby wearing because that can be very comforting to them and of course if it gets them to stop crying if you're dealing with colic you'll do anything. The next thing I suggest you try if your baby likes baths is doing a warm bath. So I have a whole video on infant baths and how I do those newborn swaddle baths. I'll put a link up here. But if you want your baby to enjoy baths and your baby is suffering from colic, one way that might be able to calm them down, you can see she's starting to get a little mad, uh, is actually a bath. So you can put them in the tub, give them a nice cozy bath, and then feed them and see if you can kind of reset them essentially to see if they'll be happy after that. I have found baths have been pretty successful as long as the transfer after the bath is pretty seamless. And so my tip that I include in my other video is to heat that towel to make sure that when you take baby out of the tub it's not shockingly cold. So that is another idea that you can try to combat infant colic. My last tip and one that I really try to take to heart myself is the fact that remember that this is temporary. It is temporary that infants go through colic and it will go away by about three months old. I have to tell myself that every single day as I am trying to get things done or as Mina wakes up our other daughter Alice from her naps by screaming. I have to remind myself that this is temporary and I've done everything that I can. It's nothing that you have done yourself and that it is a phase and it will pass and sometimes you just got to do what you got to do to deal with it. If that means putting your baby down in a safe space and walking away for five minutes, you're going to have to do that sometimes. We've found that wearing her tends to work but you know sometimes at the end of the night we just say, Mina we love you so much but we are sick of your nonsense. <laughs> and it is true. Now you wouldn't know it from looking at her right now because she is happily asleep, mercifully. <laughs> but you know there's some nights where you just gotta crack open a bottle of wine and have a glass. <laughs> So what are you doing if you are a colic parent like me, one of the lucky ones? What are you doing to combat colic? How are you staying sane? How are you dealing with all of this in light of having a new baby in the house? I know for us it is a major adjustment because not only have we never dealt with colic but we also have a 17 month old as well. So we have two under two that we're adjusting to plus the added bonus of having a baby with colic. I would love to hear in the comments below what you're doing to deal with that and any tips that you have that you found have worked for you because we're all kind of in this together fellow colic parents. It is a rough road but we're going to get through it and I know once we're on the other side of it we're going to look back and remember how awful it was, let's be real, but <laughs> be glad that we're past it. If you like this video give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. I do all sorts of parenting and new parent content as well as developmental milestones. I'll be doing a developmental milestone video for this little lady Mina for every month of her life as well as for my 17 month old and what's age appropriate and developmentally what you should be looking for there as well. I appreciate you stopping by and I will see you next time. Take care!